Before we proceed with the open forum, allow me to introduce our distinguished panel of guests who will answer the questions from the audience. The panel is headed by our convener, Professor Miriam Coronel Ferrer of the Department of Political Science, College of Social Sciences and Philosophy. She is joined by members of the 1986 Constitutional Commission, Dr. Florangel Rosario Braid, President of the Asian Institute of Journalism and Communication, and Dr. Wilfrido Villacorta, former Vice President of the De La Salle University and, Se and Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN. Also with us is photographer and filmmaker who worked together with Professor Ferrer on the film that we had just watched, Mr. Tutut Sliesta. Let me also acknowledge some special guests who joined us this afternoon. Former UP President Professor Jose V. Abueva, Ambassador Howard D., former chair of the GRP panel for talks with MDF, Ms. Teresita Ding Deles, former presidential advisor on the peace process. <laughs> Professors Raul and Lorna Segovia. Mr. Byron Bocar of Akbayan, representing Representative Risa Ontiveros Baraquel. Ms. Pauline Sikam, member of the government negotiating panel for talks with CPP, NPA, and DF. Ms. Teresita Ang Si, our colleagues and friends from the, the Sonzi Ortigas Peace Institute, headed by Ms. Karen Tanyada, and Zainuddin Malang representing Morodo. Our panel is now ready for questions from the audience here in UP Diliman as well as those in the other campuses. Since we have very limited time, please keep your questions brief and direct to the point. We will entertain the first two questions from our audience here in Ms. Med, after which we will request our panel to respond to the questions. Then we will move to the various constituent universities where we will again get two questions from each for the panel to answer. This we hope will will help us to manage our time more efficiently. So let us now start with the questions from our audience here in the auditorium. Please raise your hand and when you are recognized, please proceed to the nearest microphone, state your name, your college or institution, and your question. Who would like to give the first question? Yes, uh, Professor Estrella Solito. Thanks also. I really was fascinated by that presentation. However, up to this point, I've not heard the definition of peace. Okay. If we have done this social science too, it seems Augustine had at least 10 definitions of peace. And so that's communism, which means absence when there is no more capitalist country standing. And U.S. peace means there is no war, but it doesn't say what there is, okay? So my proposed definition of peace is that it is the result of harmonious relationship of parts. So in the Philippine Constitution, we really don't know the parts. If we know some of them, they're really disagreeable parts. Nothing in agreement like MNLF, MILF, Manila, Mountain Province, and so forth. So there is no harmony in, the, in what they want to have. So the Constitution cannot raise this up to a constitutional level to provide for peace. 
So I would need first the definition of peace. And I say here, harmonious relationship of parts. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sulidum. We can entertain one more question from the auditorium. Yes, please. Um, I'm Darlene Ramos. I'm with Sulong Karil, of which Ms. Miriam Ferrer is a convener. Um, my question is regarding uh, the U.S. offering aid um, with regards to the ill-fated Princess of the Stars, sending uh, USS Ronald Reagan. Um, I'd like to ask the panel if this would constitute a violation, an outright violation of the Constitution. Uh, I know that the provision on anti-nuclear weapons states uh, it's uh, anti-nuclear weapons only, but this is, uh, and the uh, U.S. Ambassador Kenny said that there were no nuclear weapons on board, but uh, would this constitute uh, violations of other provisions of the Constitution, maybe on national sovereignty, or otherwise, uh, does this promote uh, unpeace, at least, in the Philippines? May we request our um, guests uh, to respond? Please press the right button of your microphone. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad that, uh, first of all, uh, allow me to thank the UP for, for this invitation. Uh, it's always nice to be back to your uh, beloved alma mater. Uh, and I must congratulate uh, the uh, producers of this uh, video presentation. This is 21st, the 21st century approach to, to teaching when we professors will be phased out and or at least there will be very few professors who will appear on video to teach several audiences. Now I'm glad that my mentor uh, Dr. Sulidum uh, offered the definition of peace because that will really uh, make us focus. Um, harmonized relationship of parts, of parts rather and uh, I just would like to direct you to Section 7, Article 2, uh, Declaration of Principles and State Policy in, in the Constitution, uh, which will, <coughs> excuse me, hopefully clarify what we meant by peace in the uh, 1986 Constitution, uh, Constitutional Commission. Uh, Section 7 says, the state shall pursue an independent foreign policy, by the way, not neutrality, in the, an independent foreign policy in its relations with other states. The paramount consideration shall be national sovereignty, territorial integrity, national interest, and the right to self-determination. Now, I'm sure that the political science professors and, uh, and students or majors would uh, uh, appreciate the nuance of this term right to self-determination because uh, many people think that uh, the right to self-determination means national independence if we go by the uh, international covenant on economic social and cultural rights which was adopted in 1966 by the UN General Assembly there is in part one, article one, that says, and it's the very first provision after the preamble, all peoples have the right of self-determination. By virtue of that right, they freely determine their political status and freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. And this, uh, conforms very well with the, with the definition of uh, Professor Solidum. Peace as harmony or as, uh, or, uh, uh, as harmonized relationship of parts. Kasi pag sinabi natin yung principle of self-determination, hindi lang ibig sabihin nito yung 
uh, right of self-determination natin bilang isang buong bansa ng Pilipinas. Kinikilala nito, and I'm sure Professor Abueba will uh, reinforce this, kinikilala nito ang karapatan ng bawat parte o bahagi ng Pilipinas upang uh, makapag, uh, makilahok sa pagpapasya ng kasalukuyan at kinabukasan ng bayan. At kasama dyan, ang ating mga kapatid na Muslim, kapatid na mga lumad, kapatid na mga sa mga malalayong lugar sa malayo sa Maynila at uh, ang pagkakaunawaan ang pagtutulungan ng lahat ng bahagi ng bansa dahil sa la ay merong tinatawag na common right of self determination which is basically a harmonized relationship among themselves yun ang tinatawag na tunay na kapayapaan so uh, If we uh, continue reading the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, uh, Article 1, Number 2, all peoples may, for their own ends, freely dispose of their natural wealth and resources without prejudice to any obligations arising out of international economic cooperation, based upon the principle of mutual benefit and international law. In no case may a people be deprived of its own means of subsistence. Ngayon, lagi natin sinasabi ang Mindanao ang pinakamayamang bahagi ng Pilipinas. At ang original na may-ari ng Mindanao ay ang ating mga kapatid na Muslim. Upang magkaroon ng kapayapaan sa Mindanao at sa buong bayan, Siguro ay dapat nating kilanlin ang kanilang ancestral rights, ang kanilang karapatan na makinabang sa kayamanan ng Mindanao at makibahagi sa decision-making process at the highest level ng ating mga kapatid na marginalized, mga uh, indigenous groups, hindi lamang ang ating mga kapatid na Muslim. So, uh, I don't know if my uh, mentor professor agrees with me in my elaboration of her definition of peace as applied to the, the Constitution. Sorry for talking too long. Uh, if I, maybe I can respond to the second question. But if Commissioner Boon, please. Okay, very briefly, you asked if uh, there's any violation of the Constitution with the sending in of the USS. Ronald Reagan, I think if you read the proceedings, it was rather clear there that nuclear-capable uh, nu nuclear vessels not bearing nuclear weapons may be allowed. But as you indicated in the film, sometimes the problem is uh, to a certain way.